we will learn ethical hacking. Ethical hacking is a type of hacking which we will study in upcoming lessons. We will be learning about different type of hackers, different type of attacks and prevention from those attacks in this series. Let me cover some disclaims. We are providing this information for educational purpose only. After completing this course, you may not use the knowledge you acquire from here to cause harm to any individual or governed body. If you do so, we are not liable for any actions that are taken against you. Warning: You may not try this with any public network or internet because if you are found guilty for causing any harm to any individual, government, corporate body, non-profits, etc., you will be sued with very serious charges of cyber crime. We recommend you to practice these lessons in this course on your own system with your own data in your own private or local network. So this was the quick overview and from the very next tutorial we will be starting with ethical hacking. Thank you. Welcome to ethical hacking. Chapter 1 An Introduction to Hacking Before we start with hacking let us first cover what is a system. A system mainly contains three parts input, output and a process. And this is how these three components are connected. You have seen systems in your day to day life and I will give you some examples very soon. Now let us come to the point hacking. What is hacking? Hacking is a non-conventional way to interact with any system. It is a special skill set which consists of technical and situational soundness toward the particular system. As I have said I will give you some examples of systems. Here are few. Operating system, network systems, mobile phone systems, banking systems and information systems. Remember this diagram. Now let me tell you what is hacking. According to the system, we have to interact with the system using the given user interface. For example, to use a computer we must use keyboard and a mouse. If we find out some other way using which we can interact with our computer without using mouse and keyboard, that is hacking. As simple as that. So, this is how we can interact with the system without using the standard user interface. And system is generating the output and giving it back to the output device like our monitor, speaker or printer. If we find out some other way that we can use that generated output without the use of monitor, speaker or printer is hacking. Both of these processes may or may not be connected. I hope you are now clear with what is hacking. Remember hacking is not a one, two, three day task. It is a big project. From where to start this project? The basic requirement for learning hacking 
is to have a deep knowledge about how system works. Acquire the knowledge of the components, subsystems that are used in that system and their internal structure. Understand your objectives very clearly and precisely. As I said, it is a big project. You must have the idea where you want to reach. Any prerequisites? Yes. As we are doing this course on a computer hacking, you will need at least one computer to do practice on lessons you learn from here. You must have the knowledge of basic computing concepts. You must have the knowledge of any one programming languages. And you must have a good will to learn with practice. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this chapter, we will learn about different type of hackers. First of all, hacker is an individual or organization which is involved in the activity of hacking. We can classify these hackers depending upon their skills. On the basis of the skill that a hacker possess, we can classify them into several type of hackers. Here are few. Experts. We can refer them as computer science geniuses. These category of people are actually able to develop some hacking models on their own. They have a very deep knowledge about computer science and they are experts in the field. These type of hackers are not generally genius but they are very sound technically and they can deploy hacking models and they can actually develop some tools using which they can hack into systems. Next is script kiddies or no voice. These people are having very little knowledge or no knowledge about hacking and they somehow get their hands on some scripts which is written by someone else and they just want to explore hacking. You may have heard about hats in hacking. Hacker is someone who hacks the system as I have already discussed. In the world of computer hacking there are three terms which are very popular which represents a class of a hacker. Black hat hacker, gray hat hacker, white hat hacker. Black hat hackers. A black hat hacker is a hacker who violates the computer security for little reason beyond malicious or for personal gain. That means these are the people who are doing it for their own personal reasons and which is bad for the system because they are violating the computer security. They try to hack into systems by using the following part of the complete attempt. Part 1 is targeting. Part 2 is research and information gathering and part 3 is finishing the attack. Second type of hackers are gray hat hackers. A gray hat hacker is a combination of black hat and a white hat hacker. We will learn about white hat hackers in a few minutes but a gray hat hacker may surf the internet and hack into a computer system for the sole purpose of notifying the administrator that their system has been hacked. For example, they may offer to repair their system for a small fee. 
these people are not too bad and not too good. White hat hackers. A white hat hacker break security for non-malicious reasons. That means they don't have any bad intentions as like black hat hackers. Perhaps to test their own security system or while working for a security company which makes security software. So ultimately white hat hacker is a good guy who hacks into systems for good reasons. The term white hat in the internet slang refers to an ethical hacker and we will be covering how to hack into systems for good reasons throughout this course. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this ethical hacking tutorial we will be learning types of attack. There are generally three type of attacks by which you can plan to hack into any system. First is physical attack. Second is social attack. And third is digital attack. Physical attack. Hacker is getting the access to the computer or system physically means the hacker himself is going to the server building and arrange some physical contact with the premise after getting there hacker might steal data directly open some security barriers or create a bridge from where he can connect to the system social attack hacker is getting directly into the contact of the victim pretending to be someone else and try to get the information about his objective for example a hacker may call someone from a fake number and ask about the credit card details so that he can later use this information to hack that person's credit card or sending an email for an offer and try to get the login credentials so if you receive such emails you should not reply them next is digital attack this is the most popular attack and throughout this course we will be learning about this type of attacks. In this type of attack the hacker uses his computer expertise and plans to hack the system. There are several attacks which we will be covering throughout this series. Thank you. Welcome friends. In this ethical hacking tutorial, we will be learning why do people hack. Now in previous tutorials, we have seen what is hacking and what are the type of hackers. But in this tutorial, we will learn why do people hack. There are some reasons which I will cover in this tutorial. First is to change the interface. A system is given a user interface using which you can interact with the system but if you don't like the interface or you want to change the interface you can hack into the system for example in Windows operating systems you can actually hack and change some of the default setting which you want to change like the startup screen and the themes, the colors of menus and everything. You can do it by registry editor which is very easy. Second is to impersonate. As you know we are in an information age where social media is growing so quickly. People will try to 
pretend to be someone else and so they hack accounts let it be facebook account let it be twitter account let it be gmail account or anything you can hack account and you can pretend to be someone else another reason is to get or steal data this data may be confidential like your social security number your credit card details your bank account details your personal information etc hackers hack into systems and get your personal data to actually use it for their own purpose next up is to use software for free as you know most of the software packages and operating system and nowadays most of devices come with a software license where you have to purchase those softwares legitimately and then only you can use them but many hackers do hack into the systems and they use those softwares for free fifth is to cause harm to the victims so hackers may hack into the system and they can upload viruses malwares spam bots and other things to your system and so that they can actually harm your system sixth is to just try it out just for fun most of the hacker hacks into the system to test their abilities majorly the people who have learned hacking very recently used to hack for these purposes they are not intended to cause harm to anybody they are just testing out their newly learned skills these are all the reasons which i could figure out for which people do hacking so now we are clear with what is hacking who are hackers and why do people hack thank you welcome friends in this tutorial we will be learning about how to get the ip address of any website to hack into any website the first step is you need the ip address and so we will cover how to find out the ip address for any particular website it is very easy and simple i am running on windows xp and you can follow the same steps in any microsoft windows operating system go to start menu all programs accessories and command prompt this is the command prompt of microsoft windows xp type p i n g ping space the domain name of the website for example www.google.com and press enter as you can see our operating system sends some packets to that website and from that you can have some information this is the ip address of google.com for me number of bytes sent in that packet time time to leave we have sent four packets received four replies and 0% loss so using this ping command you can actually 
get the IP address of any website. Thank you. Welcome friends. In some previous tutorial, we have learned about how to get the IP address of any website. In this tutorial, we will be learning about the denial of service attack. Denial of service attack is used to flood any website with lot of request so that it cannot serve the actual request which comes from the user. By using this kind of attack we can make any website down. To do that go ahead and open the command prompt. Here type ping and the website name. For example, I have given www.test.com. Here I have configured my DNS settings to route to any other IP address which we will learn in upcoming tutorials. But for now, just remember ping dash website address and press enter. We will note this down. So go to notepad. Average was 228ms and loss is 0%. This is just for our reference. Now go to command prompt again. And type PING the website name space dash T space dash L space 1000 dash T is used to continuously send the ping dash L is used to specify the load which is 1000 and press enter so now we are requesting this particular website with 1000 bytes. Minimize this. Open the command prompt again and do the same thing. Ping website name slash t l 1000. Minimize this. Now do that again. PING test.com slash T L 1000. Do that again. Ping test dash T dash L 1000. Do this as many time as you can do. Now let us see what is the difference and what we have acquired. I am pressing Ctrl C to stop this command. And what important thing about this is we will notice this time it has given us 242 average and 1% loss. So we will note it down 242 ms and loss 1%. Now let us go to this one. It says the average is 239 ms and loss 
let's go to this it says average is 249 ms and loss is 2% let us note that and the last one the average is 238 ms and loss 0 percent so let's conclude our results 228 ms was the actual latency of that website then what we did we started to request that website with a heavy load of one kilobyte and then its performance is decreased as you can see 242 239 240 238 which has an average of 240 which means we have successfully decreased the performance of website then the actual loss of packets was 0% and after our attack we have increased the loss by average of 0.75% in this case we were sending four simultaneous packets if we increase this number to 400 and if we increase the load from 1 kilobyte to 1 megabyte we can significantly decrease the performance of any particular website this was the denial of service attack thank you welcome friends in this ethical hacking tutorial we will be learning about preventing from denial of service in previous tutorial we have learned about the denial of service attack and in this tutorial we will be learning how to prevent from such attacks denial of service denial of service attacks are centered around the concept of overloading a target's resources and the system will ultimately crash in the case of a denial of service attack against a web application the software is overloaded by the attack and the application fails to serve the web pages properly to crash a web server running an application risks associated with denial of service attacks network bandwidth server memory application exception handling mechanism CPU usage hard disk space database space and database connection pool that means if you don't prevent from denial of service attack you have risks in these fields vulnerability extortion the attacker threaten to continue disrupting service until the payment is received sabotage computing businesses attack websites to build a stronger market share brand damage sites that are attacked find their reputation is hurt by the lack of uptime or the perception that the site is not secure financial loss site that are attacked are prevented from doing business online the result is often in a loss in sale revenue or advertising revenue other attacks 
information gathered from a successful denial of service attack can be used later to further attack a website. Now we will cover some steps that you can take to prevent from denial of service attack. Firewalls. Firewalls can be set up to have simple rules such to allow or deny protocols, ports or IP addresses. In the case of a simple attack coming from a small amount of unusual IP, for instance, one could put up a simple rule to drop all the incoming traffic from those attacks. This means you can simply set up your firewall and stop the attack. Switches Most switches have some rate limiting and ACL capacity. These schemes will work as long as the DOS attack are some time that can be prevented using them. For example, SYN flood can be prevented using the delayed binding or TCP splicing. Similarly, content based DOS attack may be prevented using deep packet inspection. That means you can configure your network switches to prevent from such attacks. Routers Similar to switches, routers have some rate limiting and ACL capacity. They too are manually set. Most routers can be easily overwhelmed under DOS attack. If you add rules to take flow statistics out of the router during the DOS attack, they further slow down and complicate the matter. Other preventions which are quite technical and you may search about them to get more information. Application front-end hardware IPS based prevention DDS based defense black holing and sink holing so this was the tutorial of how to prevent from DOS attack and what are the threats of DOS attack thank you welcome friends in this tutorial we will be learning about SQL injection. SQL injection is an attack which is performed by someone who is exploiting the SQL vulnerability. In this tutorial we will be using MySQL as our database and PHP scripting language. As you have already seen the AMP course here I have installed WAMP server which you can learn from our AMP course. Now let's go to our local host which is our web server home page and navigate to phpMyAdmin. Now phpMyAdmin is a database management utility for our MySQL database which comes along with WAMP server. Here you can see one database test. In this database we have one table called users where we have one row this admin and password. Now let's go to our SQL injection example page which is this page. So this page is basically a login page which checks whether the username and password you enter here is valid and registered here or not. So it should be checking whether the username is equal to admin and the password is equal to password or not. 
so let's try admin and password when I click login it says correct login for debug purpose I have made this login script to print the complete SQL statement as you can see it is select count uname from users where uname is equal to admin which we have entered here and pass is equal to password which we have entered here so it takes this and this value from our input and when we click login it go to the database and check whether it is correct or not now let me give a wrong username and password let's say admin and in password let me write any incorrect password and click on login so here it says invalid login because I have given the username admin but I have given password as incorrect so it checks that whether these pair is matching or not to learn this tutorial and to get the concept of SQL injection you must be familiar with this SQL statement so for that you can go ahead and check our SQL tutorials on MySQL, MSSQL or Oracle so this is how our system works and from the very next tutorial I will be showing you how we can inject our SQL query and we can log in without knowing the correct password. Thank you. Welcome friends. We are continuing from our previous tutorial of SQL injection. In our previous tutorial I have explained you how our login system works. To learn SQL injection in depth you must have the knowledge of SQL queries here is one and if you don't know SQL queries you can always go ahead and check our courses on MySQL, MSSQL and Oracle let's move forward now let me do a trick for you so that you will come to know what is SQL injection instead of giving a correct username I am typing admin quote space two hyphens and space and what this does is very interesting which we will cover in just a few minutes but for now just remember that we have written our correct username quote space two hyphens and space and in the place of password we can write down any password doesn't matter really that it is correct or incorrect and let's click on login now this is something which should not happen it says correct login but the login is actually not correct because our password is wrong pass so how this happened you can see the actual SQL query is select count uname from users where uname is equal to admin now up to this our query works very fine which checks the username is equal to admin or not but what we have entered is this extra part now what this part does is it is actually completing this quote so that means 
these both quotes are done after the space we have entered two hyphen and then a space two hyphen followed by space is interpreted as comment so our SQL statement is actually this and all this rest of the part is interpreted as comment so our database doesn't really look at this and it just check if the username is equal to admin or not so in this way if you know the correct username you can log in into system without knowing the correct password this is the example of our SQL injection and if you search on internet you'll find multiple ways of injecting such SQL commands into the login forms in our next tutorial we will learn how we can prevent from such SQL injections thank you welcome friends in this tutorial we will be learning about DNS hacking but before we get started let me show you one magic open up your web browser now let's open google.com I hope all of you are familiar with google.com it is the most popular search engine across World Wide Web now if you have ever visited the Google home page they have one Google logo one search box and a button so whenever you go to google.com that page show up now let me tell you how it is done when you write google.com and hit go your browser go to a DNS service and it resolves the IP address for google.com and then it is connected to that particular server and that server serves you the Google home page so let's go to google.com it says you have been hacked amazed obviously as you can see we are at google.com and it says you have been hacked so how it is done I have set my local DNS in such a way that if I go to google.com it resolves the IP address as my own local server IP which is 127.0.0.1 interesting isn't it so in the very next tutorial we'll be covering how to do that and what can be the threats if someone is able to hack your DNS thank you welcome friends we are continuing from the previous tutorial where I have demonstrated a local DNS hack and now let me show you how it's done I'm running on Windows XP and if you are on a Windows machine it will be very easy if you are on a Linux or Mac machine you can do it either just search about DNS hacking and you will get it in minutes so go to start menu open my computer open C drive Windows system 32 go to drivers and now go to ETC you can see there are five files here and the file for which we are looking is hosts so right click on that file and open it with any text editor you can do it with notepad here I have installed notepad++ 
So I will open it with Notepad++. Now this file is your local DNS and what it does is it provides the IP address for the domains. Now you can see how our Google magic worked. We have inserted one entry where the domain name is google.com with www or without www and its IP was 127.0.0.1 which is our local IP so whenever our computer tries to go to the google.com it resolves the physical address as this address and so the site is being served now let me tell you what are the threats of this hack suppose some hacker have hacked your DNS and he puts the domain name as any bank or PayPal or any sensitive website let's say www.bankofbaroda.com and in the place of IP address the hacker puts his own IP so that whenever your computer want to connect to that bank website it resolves the IP address of that hacker server and then hacker can access all your credentials and sensitive information and he can use it for his own purpose so in that way if someone can hack your computer and hack your DNS he can actually access all your sensitive and confidential information this was the local DNS now above this local DNS there is a network sized DNS which may be in your router or any other networking device that is in the upper stack of your computer network so if the hacker can access that particular DNS he can hack into that and do the same which he could have been done with the local DNS and there are some companies and communities who are providing DNS solutions and services which is on a very large and global scale and they provide it securely so in the next tutorial I will show you how to prevent from DNS hacking thank you welcome friends in this tutorial we will be learning about prevention from DNS hacking the most efficient prevention from DNS hacking is to restrict access restrict the access to your local DNS by protecting your operating system with a strong password if possible protect your computer with a BIOS password you can search on Google upon BIOS passwords or you can refer our tutorials. You should restrict access to your DNS web portal by IP address. While this might limit the usability if a staff member is traveling, it ensures that if your email account is compromised that the attacker cannot log in from any IP address that is not already specified on your account that means you specify the IP limit from where a user can log in into your system another reliable option is using reliable DNS services such as OpenDNS. 
Open DNS is a domain name system resolution service. Open DNS extends DNS adding features such as misspelling correction, phishing protection and optional content filtering. It provides an ad support service showing relevant ads when we search results and a paid advertisement free service as well. Let's have a look at OpenDNS website. It is www.opendns.com. This is how it looks like. They provide you domain name system from where your system can resolve IP addresses for the given domain name. Welcome friends. In this tutorial, we will learn how to configure our DNS to use open DNS servers for resolving IP addresses. For that, go to control panel and open network connections. Here, you will find local area network or your own network connection. So select the appropriate network connection, right click on that, go to properties. Here you will find several properties. We are into general tab. Select internet protocol TCP IP and click on properties. Here you will find out this option which is use the following DNS server addresses. Click on this option, preferred DNS server and alternate DNS server option will open up. Write down 208.67.1.1. Two, two, two. In the alternative address 208.67.220.220 You can find out these IP addresses on the Open DNS website which we have shown in the previous tutorial. Press OK. Click on Close. Now our internet connection is configured to resolve IP addresses from open DNS service. This was how we can prevent from DNS hacking. Thank you. Welcome friends. In both of our previous tutorials we have learned how we can perform SQL injection and login into system where we don't know the password actually. In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to prevent from such SQL injections. For that, let's take a look at our login script. As I said before, to understand this tutorial completely, you should have the knowledge of PHP. If you don't know PHP, you can check our tutorial on PHP and so you will have the complete knowledge about what is going on here. So let me tell you this statement connects to our database. This statement selects the database then this part is responsible for checking whether the username and password entered are correct or incorrect. This is our input of username and this is our input of password. We are assigning this value to 
uname variable and we are assigning the password value to pass variable and this is our SQL query it is select count uname from users which is our table name where uname is equal to this variable uname and password is equal to this variable password that means it checks whether our given username and password exists in database and if it exists this query will count the occurrence of our given criteria now we are firing this query and we are fetching this result now let's come here if the result is zero that means there is zero rows that contains the same username and password it says invalid login and if there are more than zero rows that mean one or more rows that contains the same username and password then it will return correct login and as I said this query debug is for the debug purpose of our SQL statement so this is the internal mechanism of our login script so what is exactly happening when someone tries to inject SQL it is taking this whole part as comment and SQL is not processing this part that means if you have the correct username you can log in so how we can prevent from this is we can restrict user from entering such control characters and doing this is very easy we can restrict users for entering such control characters by a very useful command of our MySQL library in PHP which is MySQL escape string and what it does is it actually escape all the control characters from the string so it prevent our SQL query to be injected by someone else save this and let's reload this it asks us to repeat that action and click on resend and as you can see it says invalid login to debug our SQL statement let's have a look query till here seems to be okay but this backward slash is being entered automatically by our command which was mysql escape string it is actually a method which escapes the strings from our mysql query so it checks character sets of our database and it removes all the control characters from the query so our given input is this because it neglect this quote by this backward slash and hence we are saved so remember to prevent from SQL injection we can simply use a very useful method which is MySQL escape string if you are working with any other language than PHP you can also use same kind of logic to save your script thank you welcome friends in this tutorial we will learn how to change the welcome screen of our Windows XP now I am having Windows XP professional edition and this is my login screen it says log on to Windows and then it asks for username and password this is a secure way to login into Windows now 
I am having one blank password so I will just simply click OK but I don't recommend you to use a blank password so let's go ahead and change our welcome screen go to start menu click on run and write down reg edit r e g e d i t reg edit and hit ok now this will open up the registry editor for us in registry editor your screen will be showing this now go to H key users then go to default which is dot default then click on control panel and from control panel go to desktop here various keys are given from these keys select wallpaper and here we have to give the address of the wallpaper which we want to set as our logon screen so go to my documents my picture and sample pictures select any of them let's say this one right click on that and open it in paint now go to files and click on save as here we have to save this file with a bitmap extension which is dot bmp the reason behind this is windows can accept the logon screen only in the bitmap format so save as and hit save as you can see our file is being saved now go to the address bar and copy the address and paste it then again copy the file name and after a backward slash enter the file name dash bmp and press ok close the register editor close paint and that's it so when you next time restart your computer you'll see magic let's see let's restart our computer press ok as you can see our logo on screen has been changed where it was a blue screen previously so this is just one trick by which you can change the logo on screen of Windows XP. Thank you.